Helping Seniors Television, all about improving quality of life for seniors. If you're a senior, know a senior, or plan to be a senior, then this show is for you. It's all about helping you develop your own aging plan so you can age actively and with dignity. Helping Seniors Television, from the Helping Seniors Network of Information, Education, and Resources. I'm Kerry Fink with Helping Seniors of Brevard Television. Welcome to the show today. This show is uh, the show that's designed to help you in developing your own aging plan. That's what our president and founder, Joe Steckler, has talked about literally since day one. Is As seniors, uh, this is all on-the-job training for us, right? We go a day at a time, and we've, we have a new experience, and then we're trying to adjust to that. But an aging plan, we live in Florida, so we understand a hurricane plan, right? doesn't mean you want to have a hurricane hit where you live. It's just you want to do all that you can to be prepared and you know the steps that you're going to take if they tell you that the storm is imminent. Well, much of the same way in aging, things happen along the way and we can either just choose to react to it, which is a terrible thing to do, particularly in the senior world, or we can try to be proactive and get a little bit ahead of it. So as an organization, we've actually uh, kind of, we kind of smilingly call it helping you get your ducks in a row. And what we mean by that is just helping you organize the things so that you're prepared to weather whatever things may be coming along your way. And so with one of those things that if you live here on the uh, Space Coast, we serve Brevard County. We're 100% local to Brevard County, charitable organization founded by Joe Steckler, the same fellow who got everything running with Brevard Alzheimer's Foundation uh, he established the Joe's Clubs. There's three locations of adult daycare centers throughout Brevard County that to this day carry his name because he felt it was important to set up resources for seniors and their families that needed that extra help as caregivers. But then beyond that, when he retired from that, and Joe, he retired from the Navy, he retired from Brevard Alzheimer's, couldn't stay retired. So in 2011, he started an organization called Helping Seniors of Brevard. That's our organization today. And Joe set that up because he said, Carrie, one thing I learned in my journey with everything we were trying to do with Brevard Alzheimer's is seniors run into problems that go well beyond memory issues. And we want to make sure that we have a way that we can help seniors do that. We live in a county that is 25% uh, of us is over 65 and one in two of us is over the age of 50. So if you want to use AARP's definition, uh, you walk down the street and it's there's not a senior, there's a senior. There's not a senior, there's a senior. It literally is like that. And one of the challenges that we've discovered in the Space Coast, and Joe has been a pretty vocal advocate for seniors on this, is that as home prices have, have changed and shifted and things are moving in the marketplace, it's become tougher on seniors to be able to be effective in staying in their homes. Uh, we hear stories through the Helping Seniors Information Helpline, which Nancy Deerdorf, who is a... Uh, uh, has 33 years worth of registered nurse experience. She ran one of the largest home health agencies in Brevard County for a number of years. Um, she says, by far, the number one call we're getting is about housing. And we thought uh, that prompted Joe to run a series of articles about the topic and just helping people understand the, the challenges seniors have with affordable housing. If you have great resources, you probably have a lot of options, but the challenge is if you don't have a lot of resources, you really need all the help that you can get. And even in today's marketplace where housing prices have increased a lot, one of the challenges you you may have fairly good resources, but they may not even be enough. Point in, uh, case in point is the number one call that uh, Nancy has been getting on our Helping Seniors Helpline is from people who may have rented a place for a number of years. They find that uh, because, of, because of the change, maybe there was a change of ownership in the property, now the new owners, they're not trying to be unkind, but they have a bigger uh, responsibility back in terms of mortgages, taxes, and different things like that than a former owner did. So they have to pass along that cost through increased rent. Well, that's fine if you're a younger person, maybe you take a second job, maybe you can work some overtime, find ways to mitigate that. As a senior, particularly if you're uh, dealing with limited fixed income, that becomes a nightmare. And so one of the people that is really kind of a hero in this, uh, we had the privilege of eating, and I'm so excited to introduce you to her today. Uh, her name is Vinnie Richardson. She founded an organization called the Christian Housing Ministry, 
And that has now created an association with an organization called the Housing Foundation of America. Welcome today. How are you doing, Vinny? Oh, I'm doing fine. Thank you, Carrie. How are you? I'm really good. And we had such a good conversation about this. Uh, we first met up, actually, we were making presentations before the county about uh, some grant funding possibilities. And we found out that we were very much like spirits in the fact that we're both trying to do what we can uh, from all sides to make things better for seniors. And you, because of the association with uh, Housing Foundation of America and your particular passion for making sure seniors uh, are able to stay out from the homeless challenge. I can, I can, we, we've mentioned this before. I can only imagine if you're 30 or 40 and you find yourself uh, homeless, that's got to be tragic. I cannot imagine if you're in your 70s or 80s. And we get those calls, folks, and, and you do yes. as well. Yes, yes, we do. And it's not only... It's, it's tragic. It is extremely crisis level. When you get to um, the point where you are 65, you're retired, you're living on a limited income, you've just been making it along as far as paying your rent is concerned, and now all of a sudden the landlord tells you that he's getting ready to sell the place. Or well, he already transferred it over, and now your rent is getting ready to uh, go up by 25 or 50%. And so that is a crisis situation for our seniors who are living on a fixed income. You know, one of the statistics you were sharing with me before we started the cameras, uh, we were talking about we live in a county with 650,000 people, give or take. Yes. And you were telling me that the percentage of folks below the poverty line, you said is as much as was 10%, it 10%? 10%. 10%. And the seniors get the brunt of it. I can tell you because they cannot get out there and go to work. Most of them have experienced some health issues uh, because of their, just because of their age. And they can't get out there and go to work. But, uh, and, and so whenever you have a crisis situation for a senior, it is compounded. The problems that exist has compounded. Most of the time, I, I have one situation where a lady, uh, uh, a 75 year old, she's been in the hospital, she's rehabbing now, She's been told that she, her rent is going to go up by like 30%. Mm. And so her rent, where her rent used to be uh, $1,200, it's now going up to $1,500. And she was struggling as it was with a $2,000 a month income. And she can't qualify for the 30% to actually rent a place mm. now uh, equal to what she has or even, even lower, she's willing to step down and, and reduce her standards. Uh, and so it, it's, a crisis, it's a crisis situation for the seniors. Well, there's no question about it, and it has become the number one call that we get on the Senior Information Helpline. The good news is, though, that there are people who care and will try to step in, and you guys are those people, right? Because when I talk to you about some of the programs that uh, you've been able to offer, um, number one, the, the statistic that stuck out, stuck out in my mind was when you said 10% uh, of us are really um, challenged financially because of the poverty levels. And, that, and as you pointed out, you said, just think about that. In a county of 650,000 people, that's 65,000 people. That's, that's a right. lot of people who that's are challenged. Right. And you said even if we have 2,000 that we can help with rent or something like that, Think about that's basically just a drop in that bucket. That's right. That's right. And and the seniors in particular, I think that if we did our research, we would find that the senior statistics are much higher because the seniors, um, they're, they're, there we go again. They're on a fixed income. Mm -hmm. um, they are paying, most of them are already paying 50 to 60% of their fixed income to live in a place. Mm -hmm. And when the landlord come along and the landlord says that, well, you may have qualified five years ago because you had this part-time job, but now that you've gone into the hospital, your medical situation is, is threatened, you can't qualify for this home any longer. And that's, you know, we, you can't qualify for $2,000 a month. You can only qualify for 30% of that. That's $600. My rent is gonna be 1500 now. You might was paying twelve hundred of your two thousand dollars back then, but um, it's tough, you know. 
Right. So let's talk about some of the things that you're able to do through housing uh, Foundation of America. I know that you guys quite frequently will do uh, because because you have your own background. And I want to stop down and talk about that. Your own background is that you have helped a lot of people through the years with real estate because you understand the HUD system and you you've done a lot of work with that. You were telling me about work you did back in North Carolina during the Hurricane Floyd days. Yes. Yes, back in, in I, I think it was 1993, 94, the state of North Carolina implemented a disaster recovery program. Mm -hmm. I was part of a nonprofit at that time called Coastal Community Development Corporation, and we came together with other nonprofits in the state, and uh, we were um, challenged by the lieutenant governor at that time, Beverly Perdue. We were challenged to... Uh, bring some method and design, um, a professional method and design to counseling families who were victims of Hurricane Floyd. Mm -hmm. and that was the Hurricane Floyd disaster. And uh, we staffed up housing counselors. At that time, the, demand, the requirements for certification was not required at that time, but we staffed them up. We went out to the homes. We actually visited the communities. We assigned certain workers to certain communities, and they went out there and actually documented everything that they saw and came back and actually did an application uh, for these families with the state. And we were able to successfully complete that project. Now, you've been in Florida. We were talking about this. You've been in, in our area of Florida now for something over five years. And what I am impressed with is that you've been able to find ways to help families here locally uh, fight some of this, you know, I mean, obviously it's a, it's a battle that's bigger than us, but uh, as I heard it said once, it's like uh, the guy flipping, he saw all these starfish on the beach and he would, you know, go by and pick one up and throw it back in the water and somebody would come along and say, well, that's not going to save all these starfish, but yeah, it made a difference for that one. So how, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about how you help uh, families and seniors uh, navigate the whole process of trying to f come up with a solution? Uh, one of the things that we do um, for Housing Foundation of America, one of the things that we do is we bring together what HUD has uh, decided is a comprehensive housing counseling program. Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2017, legislation was passed that actually required that each housing counselor, HUD housing counselor, had to pass proficiency tests. And that's one of the problems that they thought existed that may have, may have contributed to the housing crash. Wow. Is that, and so they passed legislation, is, is that we did not have enough qualified people counseling and guiding the public. And so now they have a comprehensive housing counseling program where there are specific disciplines that you have to perform 80% of uh, testing. And uh, that's how you get to become HUD certified. Now, on the HUD, as a housing counselor, a HUD certified housing counselor, you are trained to work in the community to find the problem that exists that is causing stressful housing situations. You're required to find these folks. Um, we, uh, Christian Housing Ministry, mm -hmm. had developed a, a list of probably about 10,000 people wow. within the county um, who have housing problems, who are either, uh, they're housing stress, they're either overpaying um, they uh, are subject to evictions. They are subject to even foreclosures. Uh, that's a housing problem, too. And so we go in and we will talk with these people. We'll counsel them. You'll be surprised that if you do professional skill counseling the way HUD has trained us to do, if you do that skill counseling, you can find solutions to a lot of the problems that especially the seniors have. Because the seniors, for the most part, they have pretty good credit. Mm -hmm. um, they may be, um, have about $2,000 a month in income. Um, they may not can want to afford uh, to pay, say, twelve dollars or $1,500 in rent, 
But if you do that times um, 30 or 32 percent, sometimes veterans, we were talking about the veterans, mm -hmm. some of them, they can go up to 40 percent of their income. Some, some places are going up to 50 percent of the veterans' income. And you put that to, you have to be skilled in being able to apply that to what we call an amortization table. Mm -hmm. That table actually tells what that amount of payment will purchase. Mm -hmm. It backs it back out. If you ever heard of an amortization table, it backs that figure back out. It'll take, say, a person with a $2,000 a month income, it'll take that $1,000 uh, of that, and it'll take you, you take that to a table, and that will tell you where you need to start looking. And then you look, look at the market, too. You know, we've had conversations because uh, you and Nancy have been able to work together on a number of different cases. And I remember you saying it's really tragic uh, if you look at, you know, the foreclosure listings that you see at a courthouse, that a lot of that, if, if there's just an opportunity for people to get in mm -hmm. contact with some time, that there's definitely steps that can make a difference in some of that. Absolutely. Uh, under the HUD certification training program, mm -hmm. We are supposed to be trained, and we are trained. They won't let us do this level of counseling without uh, having your certificate, your national certification. But we are trained to do what we call a workout program. Um, that can either be a forbearance, uh, different types of forbearance. It can, do, it can, it can be uh, a loan modification in some kind of way. Uh, we can do uh, a short claim that will take off some of that principal. We negotiate under the Community Reinvestment Act. The bank can take some of that principal off and renegotiate that loan, bring it back out. HUD is now given 40 years now. Bring it back out into 40 years, and that will lower the payment where it is more affordable, and then that can save them from foreclosure. Well, there's a line that Nancy Deardorff says an awful lot, and it's really almost become a tagline that we use a lot. She says, you know, how do you know what you don't know? Because most of the time uh, we get ourselves in trouble on these things, but we don't really even know that we've gotten ourselves in trouble until we're fairly deep into it. Yeah. And then it becomes really difficult to try to unravel. And I'm thinking about, you know, a case of a mortgage that that is becoming overbearing. A lot of people may have been doing fine, then COVID comes along, and after, the, after that, things have shifted around, now it becomes really challenging. But it seems like most of the time that the right advice is to get somebody that you're not trying to navigate this on your own. Right, right, right. Don't try to, if you feel, right now, if you feel that um, six weeks from now or six months from now or you know you're going to be suffering from a layoff or the landlord just told you that he has to go up on the rent and you're going to be stressed even more. If you feel that way, just give us a call, 321-208-8445, and let's talk about it. Let's, let me counsel you. Let us counsel you. Let us try to lay out a plan of action mm -hmm. that will actually save either your home or will save you from being evicted. You know, that was the other thing we talked about. We get so many calls from seniors who find themselves where they are literally, um, literally facing an eviction notice, even though they've lived there and paid their rent for, you know, all this time. That's a real challenge as we talk about affordable housing. But one of the things that you said is you even... There's some, some abilities and some techniques that even buy back a little bit of time or may help, you know, even in those cases. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we can do um, is negotiate with the servicer or the lender um, to actually stop the foreclosure. Uh, if they know that they are working with HUD-approved counselors, they have... Um, agreed, most of them, under the Community Reinvestment Act, they have agreed to halt the foreclosure. Also, in, um, in rental assistance and in, in stopping these evictions, I do know that they will, some of the landlords will work with you if they know that you have been uh, applied, that you have applied for and that it, the likelihood of approval is pretty imminent that they will stop the eviction process as well. So especially that foreclosure, 
It's important to jump in there, jump in there early. If you know that you're going to be foreclosed on or they'll talk, they've sent you a demand letter or just the first level of default counsel, uh, call us, you know, so that we can do some default counseling with you. Now, you, in addition to that, you've already been doing a series of programs around uh, Brevard County where you are actually inviting people to come in and learn about uh, the things that, because I, I remember you explained this and I thought this makes sense. You said, you know, from, from your experience, the HUD programs, they really want you to invest some time and energy into what you're doing in a way that um, shows that you're willing to learn from your side what you need to do, not just what HUD can do for you, but it's kind of like it's a partnership where you two have to work together, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, for the, um, the rental assistance, uh, for people who are getting rental assistance, they can also qualify to purchase a home, many of them, if they're working, the younger folks. If they're working and they have a possibility of increasing income, mm -hmm. um, they can qualify to purchase a home. But you do have to attend a HUD-approved home buyer education workshop. And it is on Friday. Uh, it, it is most of the time it's on Saturdays, virtual now, uh, for five hours. In addition to that, we also have uh, been scheduling housing clinics throughout the Brevard County area. And we have, uh, they are being scheduled at the Brevard Public Library. We just had one last Saturday. And these clinics will allow you to come in and talk one-on-one -on -one counseling session, one-on-one -on, -one on an individual basis. So if somebody wants to find out what the current schedule is and what's offered and what's available, I assume they're going to give you a call, right? And what, what's, the, what's a good number to reach you and reach, uh, uh, reach the Christian Housing Ministry? Please call me. Uh, you will get Housing Foundation of America mm -hmm. because we do work in conjunction with mm -hmm. them. But that number is 321-208-8445. You can call me almost any time, day or night. Most of the time you have to leave a message if it's after five, but just give us a call and we will be posting those dates for the uh, community housing clinics. We will be posting those dates real soon. So if you call me and you give me your phone number, I will make sure that you get one of the blasts that we send out. You know, one of the things that is so important about this is that it is a, we, you know, you've often heard that expression, it takes a child, uh, it takes a community to raise a child. And we always talk about this, that with seniors, it really takes the community to, to make a difference. And the more that people become aware that affordable housing is a challenge, and it's really, maybe, it's a challenge for anybody at any age, but it becomes really severe as a senior, I wanted to ask you, how did this become your passion? How did, you know, of all the things, you've got a lot of experience in, in, the, uh, in the housing side of it. You, you've clearly uh, helped a lot of families over the years. But how did this become your passion? It became my passion when um, I experienced a housing crisis myself. Wow. And this was back probably in 2005. 2004, I had already worked with the HUD programs, and but but when it hit home, mm -hmm. it felt different. Right. And I remember experiencing um, how I had to jump from one uh, organization to the next organization being denied and denied and denied and mm -hmm. not knowing whether or not I was going to ever go on one list or, and uh, go on this uh, wait list for this program and that program not hearing anything back. I just felt like I was out there all by myself and that there was no one there that could help me. So after I fought my way through that crisis, I decided that I would, this would be something that when I was given the opportunity once I retired, that I would make this a commitment of mine. I promise myself as well as a higher being that I would make this a mission, that I would try to help people who were lost out there in this housing crisis that we're in. Yeah, we're talking with Vinnie Richardson, who is the founder of, of uh, Christian Housing Ministry and also uh, the, the representative with everything going on that you guys are doing with Housing Foundation of America here in Brevard County. And you've already 
together with Nancy Deardorff, you guys have already collaborated on several different, uh, we call them, it's not really cases, but, but, but families that have needed the help. And, you know, I know one of the things that Nancy has told me is one of the toughest calls she gets is somebody says, you know, somebody's going to be out of their house at 5 p.m. And really at that point, the only thing we can do is try to see if it's a, a short-term um, uh, option for a night or two. What we really need is the time and, and the energy to work through it. And that's really what you're willing and able to help somebody find a path through. Yes, we get them into a housing counseling program, a HUD approved, a HUD certified housing counseling program. We try to design a plan of action that will help them to become more housing stable. We look at their entire situation, a holistic approach. We never let them go mm -hmm. until they are housing stable. Now, you know, as far as people who call in at the last minute and they're going to uh, need um, help, they would be referred to our sh local shelters. Right. Mm -hmm. So one more time, the best number to reach Vinnie Richardson and get, get the process started of getting some help is? 321-208-8445. All right. Well, thank you for all you do for this community and for making a difference. Thank you. It is definitely heroes like you that will take the time. And, you know, one family, one situation, one particular case at a time it makes a difference. That's what we're all about here at Helping Seniors is doing the same through our Senior Information Helpline. If you need more information or more help, call us at 321-473-7770, 321-473-7770. As we like to say, don't go it on your own. Let's at least try to work together and see what we can solve. So for this edition of Helping Seniors Television, on behalf of Joe Steckler, our president and founder, Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next time on Helping Seniors TV. I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.